9.4 is on other angle relationships and circles. So if you remember, last time we talked about, guys, inscribed angles. You guys are chatty today. Inscribed angles and intercepted arcs. Do you guys remember how I talked about, like, Pac-Man eating the arc? Ian, you with me? Yes. So if this is 50, what was this angle? 25, right? And it ends up being half of the intercepted arc. And if you think about it, right, we know that an angle, ooh, that is a terrible circle. Steggy would be mad at me. <laughs> um, that 50 degrees there, right, this is the same as its central angle. And you can tell that this inscribed angle is smaller than this angle, right? Does that make sense? So it ends up being half the size of that. So uh, today we're going to be talking about other angles with circles, and sometimes they're kind of funny looking. So in this case, this is an inscribed angle. So angle 2 that we have right here is half of this intercepted arc. So if this intercepted arc was 300, that means the measure of angle 2 would equal 150, right? It's still following that same thing. It's just the inscribed angle is kind of on the outside. It's part of a tangent line as well. All right, so if uh, the blue line was 300, what's the red line have to be? 60, so then measure of angle 1 ends up being 30. Does that make sense that we would have 150 and 30? adding together because they're on the same, they're on a line, right? See how those angles add up to be 180? We're good. Makes sense. All right, so let's try this next one. So it says line M is tangent to the circle. So line M is tangent to the circle. A lot of times I told you tangent lines made a T, made a 90 degree angle. Why does this not make a 90 degree angle? And I use the word tangent. What did it make a T with? The radius going from that point of tangency to the center of the circle, right? That's what was 90 degrees. So we're not worrying about that with, when I say tangent, but we look for those things. We look for our radius to be drawn. All right, so line M is tangent to the circle. Find the measure of uh, arc RST. So RST going around. If we have an angle of 115 degrees, how do I get angle R, or the measure of arc RST? Yeah, I double 115. So 2 times 115 ends up being 230 degrees. That's it. Mind-numbingly easy, isn't it? Do you think my homework problems are mind-numbingly easy? No. <laughs> no, they are not. All right, so if I have 104, can I get the rest of this? I could. Do I need it? Let's see. So I want to find angle C, B, D. So angle C, B, D is here. So how do I get to C, B, D? I divide by 2. So my answer is 52 degrees. Okay, but we're going to talk about a formula, and this formula is kind of weird. It says when two lines intersect inside a circle, or intersect a circle, there are three places where the lines can intersect. Okay, our lines could intersect inside of the circle. The lines could intersect outside of a circle. Or the lines can intersect inside, outside, or on the circle, right? So we have inside, outside, and on the circle. And we've dealt with the on the circle ones, so check mark here, we got that. Those are the inscribed angles. Do you guys understand that? Because really, couldn't I delete these two like little segments right here and you have an inscribed angle? See how that works? We've done that. So we gotta talk about the inside and the outside ones. Okay, so here's our first theorem. Okay, so if two chords intersect in the interior of a circle, then the measure of each angle is half of the sum of the measures of the arcs intercepted by the angle and its vertical angle. Oh man, there's a lot going on here. I sometimes refer to this as a bow tie. Can we find a bow tie in this picture? It's a little lopsided. Oh, I see it. I see it. All right, so here's my X shape. This angle 1 ends up being half of the sum of DC and AB. So the measure of that angle 1 ends up being half of the sum of the two arcs, so CD and AB. Do you see how we have two intercepted arcs in that way by those two lines? You get it? So this is an intercepted arc. But I have angle 1 and I have angle 2 put in there, right? What about angle 2? Yeah? It's 
half of the measure of CD and AD? Uh, close. CB, I think is what you're trying to yeah, say. Yeah, I meant CD. And AD. I agree. Do you guys see that as well? Because that one's saying, well, measure 2, mm, angle 2 ends up being half of these two. Do you guys see how I'm forming this like little bow tie shape with the two lines and the two intercepted arcs? You get it? So the angle is half the sum of the arcs. Yeah. The first one? So measure of angle 1 is right here, right? Okay, so where's its intercepted arc? Well, the intercepted arc is the one that's right here, right? So it's going to be half of the sum of that one, but also the intercepted arc for its vertical angle. Do you know what I mean by vertical angle? Yeah. The one over here? That's its intercepted arc. So it's like you're finding the average of the two, right? That's what we're doing. It's the average of the two intercepted arcs. Okay. Yeah, I was going to have us play around on Desmos, but I was having trouble making Desmos. All right, so uh, each group will choose one type of intersection. So carefully use your ruler to draw se secants and tangents. Okay, so this is kind of hard to do, but let's try to sketch them out together. Did I skip something? I feel like I skipped something. Did I skip something? No. No, we're good? Okay. So if I have a tangent secant intersection, what I mean by that is tangent means it just barely touches the edge, right? So I have a tangent line that barely touches. You don't have to use a ruler or anything. It's fine. We're not going to measure these. And we're going to have a secant that slices through. So see how we have a tangent line and a secant line that are intersecting outside. Now, these lines do cross, right? There's other pieces to that, but I'm just going to leave it as that little V-shape. Okay. How many intercepted arcs do I have? How many arcs does the Pac-Man eat? The mouth eat? Two. Did you guys see it? This one? And this one, do you guys see it? So let's label, let's call this A, B, and C. And we'll call this angle one. Okay, the measure of angle one, very similar to that last equation I gave you. Caitlin, you with me? It's gonna be one half, instead of the sum though, it's gonna be the difference, half of the difference. I'll call it BC, AB minus BC. Collins, two inch. Collins mad because Caitlin was talking and I shushed him. I should, that was unfair, Colin, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so here's what I always say. For the ones where it meets on the outside, so the last one we just did was where it was meeting on the inside of the curve. The inside is the sum. What I always tell my students to think about is when it's crossing on the inside, it kind of looks like a plus sign. Do you see the plus sign? Okay, that's the sum. That's how we're going to remember that. The one where it's meeting on the outside, see how they're crossing on the outside? This is going to be a minus, okay? And it's always half of outer arc minus inner arc. So half outer minus inner. Do you know what I mean by outer and inner? Right? Outside, inside. Measure angle one and half that. Okay. We're do some examples in a second. Tangent, tangent. Here's what we got. Oh, I missed it. So sad. Rut row. How many intercepted arcs do I have? Two. I have two. Try to use my same colors, blue, red. We have two intercepted arcs again. This equation is still the measure of angle one equals half of the outer arc minus inner arc. Same equation. So this is for a tangent tangent intersection. See why we call it tangent tangent? So tangent means that the line just barely touches the circle. It doesn't cross the original circle. There's two tangent lines. <coughs> Previously, we talked about those segments. We called the ice cream cone theorem. Remember the ice cream, ice cream cone theorem? It's been so long. Right, and we used to do segments in between. But we're talking about angles here, not segments. How would you label that? Like if you want to call it like 
A and B or something, you could do that, but you're going to need a point in between it, like C. So it would be like half of the measure of arc ACB minus the measure of arc AB. Oops. You know when we talk about arc AB, how it's the minor arc versus the major arc? Do you remember all that? So that would be a way that you could label it. But don't like try to memorize the formulas. Know that it's half of outer minus inner. Right. Okay, secant, secant. Secant, secant means that they both cross through the circle. Something like that. What do you think the formula is going to be? Measure angle 1 equals half of the outer arc minus the inner arc. Done. And if you want to label A, B, and C, D, you can. So it's half the measure of A, B minus the measure of C, D. Okay, but don't get so hung up on those uh, letters that you get confused. Okay, easy enough? Koki, you with me? All right, so let's try some of these problems. So it says, if a tangent and secant, two tangents, or two secants, intersect on the exterior of a, of a circle, then the measure of the angle formed is half of the difference of the measures of the intercepted arcs. And it's always that outer minus inner. So as you do these problems, I want you to think, do they intersect on the outside or do they intersect on the inside? So on question number one, outside or inside? Inside. Inside. So is it half the sum or half the difference? Half the sum. Half the sum. Right. So half the sum, I'm going to have the angle, right, it's always the angle equals. X. So x equals half of the 60 plus 20. So Cam is saying already he knows that x is equal to 40. Do you guys agree? I agree. X equals 20. This isn't that bad, is it? You got this. Outside or inside? Outside. Outside. So this first one I'm going to write inside so you remember. So we did the sum outside difference. So we're going to say the angle X is half of the difference of the intercepted arcs. So why do I have to do like 136 minus 38, could I do 38 minus 136? No, because it's going to be the outer. Do we want X to be a negative number? No. No, we have to do the outer minus center. So outer minus center is going to be 136 minus 38. The outer will always be like the bigger one. So half of 98. Man, you guys are speedy today. It's a Monday. You're supposed to be like feeling a little tired right now. Not able to quickly compute that. But I'm hearing someone say 49 already. Is that right? All right, now this one's a little different. What's different? There's X's. There's X's on the outsides, right? The X's are the arcs. So remember, it's always the angle is equal to half of the either sum or <coughs> difference of the arcs. Do you know what I mean by that? These two things are the arcs. So those go together. Is it sum or difference? Different or sum. sum, right? Add them together because it was inside, so we use the sum. All right, so, hmm, I don't want that one half. How do I get rid of a one half? Divided. Divide by one half? I don't want to divide by Multiply a fraction. By two. Multiply by two. That's right, because dividing by one half is really the same as multiplying by two. So what do we get? Oh, okay. So I get 90 equals 3x, right? So x equals 30. 30. Done. <coughs> All right, let's try this. x is equal to 1 half of 170 minus 30. So we end up getting what? 1 half of 140, which is 70. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, think about these two. They're a little tricky. Try to figure out number five. I'm going to give you a couple minutes to think about it. All right, anybody have any guesses? What do we do? Yeah, Charlie. Uh, is it, uh, X equals one half, X equals 
Yeah, two fifty. Where'd you get that two fifty? Exactly. We have two hundred and fifty and we have one hundred and ten, right? That make a total of three hundred and sixty. Does that make sense? Do you guys see it? I should do this in a different color. So he's right that we should do 360 minus 110 to get that number. So he has x is equal to half of 250 minus 110. So he had half of 140, which ends up being, oh, it's still 70. Wow, that was nice of me. All right, next one. So we're going to do what Charlie says, but what are we going to write for this arc that I'm drawing in red? Ah, 360 minus x. Charlie is on it today. Do the rest of you guys understand that? Wait, how do you know that? Because they have to add to be 360 oh, degrees going around, right? Yeah? Well, but couldn't you subtract 180 from that 45 to figure out what x is? Um, I don't think so. I think it does have something to do with the 180 because of the one half of the thing, but maybe. All right, are we ready? All right, so we have... 45, that's the angle, equals half of the difference of the intercepted arcs. So see how we're going to get 360 minus x minus another x? Jacob Kuschel, you good? So what do we get? So half of 360 minus 2x. Now in this case, I'm okay with the 1 half. If you want to distribute a 1 half in, that's fine. Right, do you guys see how distributing the 1 half in is not that bad here? You get 180 minus x. So maybe it does work that way, uh, Cam. So then you can subtract the 180, so you get negative 135 equals negative x. So x is 135. That's it. Yep, not too bad. All right, that's the end, isn't it?